Good, good, good morning. Good morning. Welcome back once again. I got a little time this week, y'all. So y'all probably going to see me in different capacities this week. Good morning to wherever you are. Good afternoon if you're on the other side of the world. This is a quick... um. This is a quick uh, news report, and if you're reading the title, it says white Christian school teacher wore black face to give an African-American history lesson. It usually happens around this time. Um, I've covered a number of these type of stories on the channel of which I've taken the liberty to go and put it in the box below. And all the links usually when I do news stories are in the box below. Shout out to all of the subscribers, new subscribers. Feel free to leave your messages and your comments below. Keep it clean and respectable. And we will continue this conversation after the video is over. But the article I saw was from Fox News originally, and then Yahoo Lifestyle picked it up. And it says this, school apologizes after teacher wore blackface during African history lesson. So the title in and of itself, some people, it's just inflammatory for many, just off the bat. You understand what I'm saying? Blackface, African history lesson. Ooh, I'm inflamed. I'm the type of person. I want to see what the article is saying. So let's read a little bit because it's not that long. A superintendent's poor judgment allowed a teacher to wear blackface during an African history lesson, offending families in the community. John Hoffman, superintendent of Victory, or Victory Christian School System in Sacramento, California, explained to Yahoo Lifestyle in an email, last Thursday, our elementary chapel speaker dressed up as a Central African native woman in order to tell the life story of missionary David Livingston and his work in Africa in the late 1800s. In an effort to bring authenticity to her role, she wore a typical native dress and headdress. She also used makeup to darken her skin tone on her arms, shoulders, and face. Quote, I was wrong to allow the use of makeup, no matter how innocent the intentions, as it has offended some of my students and parents, he wrote, end quote. And he also goes on to say, I should have anticipated that this would be offensive, and I apologize to my students and parents asking to be forgiven for hurting them, end quote. On January 24th, the teacher visited the district's lower school to teach about missionary David Livingston, who visited Africa in the late 19th century, and she darkened her skin for the lesson, according to the Sacramento News Station, Fox 40. And Lifestyle Yahoo contacted the teacher in a question, but she did not respond. And then it goes on to say, I recognize the woman who wore blackface. She is oblivious, a 19-year-old former student who once her name kept private told Yahoo Lifestyle. It was very upsetting, especially because the kids in that class are so young. The former student told Yahoo that an African-American student spoke to the teacher after class to educate her about blackface, and she apologized the next day. Her mother said she would pull her daughter from the school, she told Yahoo Lifestyle. Huffman tells Yahoo Lifestyle that he apologized in an email that day and confronted the matter in a school-wide assembly. I wanted to assure them that I am planning future open discussions about this in our chapels and Bible classes in order to help students and staff understand each other's sensitivities, he wrote. There will be other opportunities scheduled for staff as well as teachers as we all learn from this together. And so that is, this is because initially the story went out and then the follow-up to the story comes the apology, not necessarily from the teacher, but from the superintendent who is taking responsibility for um, not seeing that this possibly would be a problem. Now, I'm going to read what I wrote, what, what my first reaction was, and then I'll possibly read a little bit. Let me read, no, let me read reactionary first because we the people seem to like to be reactionary before we actually, uh, you know, process what is being said. And I say that to say, when we give someone the power over us to be triggered every time we see something that has a past, then we are just going to be continually being triggered because there's always something that's going to trigger this. Now, how do we get proactive instead of reactive is the question. So because I've been covering this for some years now, I'm going to read my initial thought that I had posted when I saw it this morning on the book. Okay. 
and then I'll go a little bit more into the story. I said, I have seen a number of these stories over the years and it appears each time we the people are triggered to respond in a way that illustrates that we have not processed our own pain about the enslavement of our ancestors. Some may get mad, but truth is truth. I, and I made some points here. If the European dresses up in blackface, it's wrong. If the melanated child or teacher is asked to participate in a narrative surrounding slavery, it's wrong. If a movie is created that looks at this time period, we complain. If they mess around with history books and change the term slavery to involuntary servitude, which this happened some time ago, I believe it was Texas, we get up in arms about them trying to erase our history. The list goes on. Many of us have to pick a lane. If we're going to get up in arms about the effects of slavery, then and now, it behooves us to get a handle on the subject matter and take control of the narrative for the purposes of healing and restoration. And I know some people are gonna see that and get a little upset about that. And I, and I speak from a, 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 a semi-informed position because this is a topic that I have been covering for years and you can scroll through the channel and you can see. And oftentimes in covering these topics, the same people who are outraged on contact are the same people who do not want to address the issue themselves. So if we do not want someone else to address the issue, then we have to be willing to address the issue and be honest about addressing the issue and process those feelings and emotions. So I would say from someone who has taken the time to begin to go through these very treacherous waters um, of the, the fallout, right now we're actually reading Coming of Age in Mississippi which even after all this time is still a bit difficult to read the conditions that the melanated people were in, especially in Mississippi, which even to this day is poverty ridden. Okay. So I don't shy away from these conversations In doing so, I hope that we can elevate our level of emotional intelligence so that we are not blown with everything that comes our way. Okay. So it's, it's, it, it, so when we read the narrative about the story just now, there's some things that popped up, and this is why I put certain things in the title. Okay, so a white Christian school teacher, so they did say it was a Christian school, wore blackface to give an African-American history lesson. A lot of times when the news is covering this, they're covering it because it's controversial and they're gonna get hits. It's not about healing, it's not about addressing the matter, it's not about edification, it's about getting hits. They know that racial divide is big here in the West, namely in America. And so when you magnify these racial divides and you create this fake outrage, then you get hits and you get people to read your articles and just talk about it and then go back along their daily lives, not having dealt with anything. Okay. So I will continue. When we see these things, my, all I'm doing is pleading that we, um, take a little bit more time to sort through the some of these details here to kind of get an understanding of what's going on. Now, Again, it's a Christian school, it's in California, and they it's gonna come up into this Black History Month. But I noticed that they didn't say African-American history because when you click on the link, or if you look up the individual who she felt she needed to go into a part or role for, this Livingston character is David Livingston lived in Africa. His work was in Africa. So the, the context or the scene, when a, or the theme was not, American, uh, direct American slavery. He takes himself and goes to Africa to do certain expeditions, okay? So let's read a little bit about David Livingston since he's the reason why we're having this conversation. David Livingston was a Scottish missionary, abolitionist, so it makes sense why a Christian school will be talking about him, and physician known for his exploration, explorations of Africa, having crossed the continent during the mid 19th century. How many people knew that in the audience? In all my readings, I haven't come across David Livingston, so I find this to be very interesting. Okay. It says, born in March 19th, eight, on March 19th, 1813, in Blantree, South Lancashire, Scotland, David Livingston pursued training in medicine and missionary work before moving to Africa in 1841. So some will say this dude never even lived in America. Okay. Where a lot of America, the Caribbean, and South America is where a lot of the enslavement happened. So let's see if this particular, and I'm not sticking up for David Livingston, I'm talking about putting things in context that we are not automatically triggered the minute we see, quote, white and black, okay? 
He crossed the continent from east to west and would ultimately come across many bodies of water previously uncharted by Europeans, including the Zambiz Zamb Zambezi River and Victoria Falls. He was a staunch abolitionist after witnessing the horrors of the African slave trade and returned to the region twice after his initial voyage. He died on May 1st, 1873 in Chief Chitamambo's village near Lake Banguelu, North Rhodesia, which is now Zambia. Okay. So essentially he's a doctor. He's from Scotland. He was an abolitionist who decided to go to Africa. I'm not sure that it says here that he came to America and that you had some abolitionists on that side of the water and he goes to Africa and, you know, poking his nose into different places. Apparently he was a um, witness to a great massacre that happened where over, I want to jump down to the massacre. And again, I put the link in the box because education is what is going to, as well as talking and open communication is what is going to help us process through some of these feelings and emotions that we had tied up. Now, I will say if the black face wasn't present, we probably wouldn't be hearing about this story. And so the way in which this story of this man who went to the African continent to missionize the people the reason why it is relevant in American society is the blackface comment, okay? Blackface, that's what ties it there to here. Now, a little bit of history about blackface that I learned in doing the research for the Angry Black Woman Syndrome Revisited. If you haven't read that book, feel free to click the link and go to Amazon and it's there. But a little bit of history that I read about this, um, this era is, again, it is rooted in American Amer the American enslavement system. It is rooted in antebellum times before the Civil War, before the abolition of slavery. And it was rooted in um, this crude form of entertainment that was used to convince the Northerners that the melanated people of the South enjoyed slavery. Okay. And so for the American pastime up until that point, there were many plays that were being done that came from Europe, that came from England, like Shakespeare and things of that nature, because people always loved their entertainment. So we're going to do a little blackface history. People always loved their entertainment. And so this entertainment was the first form of authentically American entertainment that used, again, this uh, tension between the melanated population and the European population, and they put it in this very overly um, exaggerated form and they put it on stage. Now in the beginning, essentially, they were not going to let melanated people play themselves. And so this is the oppressor's viewpoint of the oppressed. So of course, the, the what do you call it? slavery being a textbook definition of domestic violence, you will notice that um, within it, within this type of talk of domestic violence or the oppressed, you always have this level of mocking. You have the individual, someone trying to mock another person. So, you know what I'm saying? So you will have, so essentially they were mocking, okay? And from these exaggerated stereotypes came, hold on. From these exaggerated stereotypes came some things that we're still facing today, like the um, sapphire, the angry black woman, the sassy woman, the mammy, all those things that are still present today. So as time went on with this black face, what happened was that after slavery, black states still continued. But not only did, and like I said to another brother who had a question, not only did black face um, mock the melanated um, body, it also marked the feminine principle. And so even in certain times in uh, history, the woman was not allowed to play herself on stage. And so men would dress in drag to play feminine or female characters. So now you have men dressing in costume to play melanated bodies, European men. And then you had European men dressing in blackface and in costume to play feminine bodies. They were playing all of these roles. When that no longer became acceptable, then you got melanated men 
to be exaggerated, dressing in blackface, to play melanated characters, as well as melanated females. So if we're going to be honest, historically honest and intellectually honest, we have to say that this didn't just become a black and white thing. You had plenty of melanated people, men, who were willing to dress in blackface and play characters as well as women. So when we see blackface, automatically we think, oh, it's, you know, it's, it's slavery. They're only just talking about slavery. No, it's talking about this whole, uh, this whole culture of mocking and, 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 and cajoling and not cajoling, mocking and um, chiding people who you feel are in your esteem lower than you. And even to this day, if you look across social media, one of the, some of the most popular comedians are those who are not necessarily dressing in blackface, but are dressing up as women. Find a lie. Comment below if I'm lying. You see what I'm saying? And so again, there are many spaces in this conversation, and as the person said, as the superintendent had said, that this, let me go down, I don't want to misquote what he said. According to him, the, well, the teacher didn't issue the apology, the superintendent is, issued the apology, and he wanted to assure them that I'm planning future discussion or open discussions about this in our chapels and Bible classes in order to help student and staff understand each other's sensitivity. So it was a melanated student who went up to this teacher and was like, yo, pull your tail, coattail, that's inappropriate. So for the fact that this teacher did not know, or it was innocent that the superintendent didn't know that this would have been inappropriate shows that the insensitivity is there and that the education needs to be had on both sides. But it doesn't stop there. If we're going to have this conversation, if we're going to be honest about this conversation and not just have knee-jerk reactions, then we need to be able to go into the history to show that our own people helped to perpetuate. Because when it got on camera, a lot of the European on blackface happened um, right as the advent of pictures and moving stories were coming into view in the late 1800s, early 1900s. A lot of the uh, cemented views of blackface were melanated men who chose to take up this narrative so that they can get paid and called it entertainment. So yes, there were some people who started it and then other people who continued it and both parties are um, responsible for what we're dealing with now. And so hopefully that can, that has helped in some way. All of the links are in the box. I think in the box below, I spoke about um, in another video last year, two years ago, there's a teacher who was playing a slavery game. Um, I'm trying to find the one where the teacher, it happened not too long ago, where the teacher wasn't just playing the slave, there's one about the slave posters, one about the teacher playing the slavery game. I think that might be the one where the teacher wanted the melanated child to um, become or pretend like they were the slave, something to that effect. And that caused the outrage. So I said that to say, it seems as if the uh, conversation around slavery needs to be had. It's just like the conversation around molestation that everybody keeps talking about, or the conversation around R. Kelly and everybody's like dancing around and skirting around the issue. And no one wants to take responsibility because it happened so long ago. And we're in 2019. And that's the past. And why do we keep rehashing it? We have to keep talking about it because it's not dealt with. I get that all the time. That was so long ago. Some of the comments, that was 200 plus years ago. Why are you talking about it? Then why is this offensive today? Because there was an offense. There was a wrong that was never righted. And so there's a void there. And as long as there's a void there, there's going to be an offense to the information. So again, hopefully that was able to connect some of the dots. I will come back later. I said 12 o'clock, but it's about 10.45, and I got to run a little bit. But we're going to come back later and read some of um, Coming of Age in Mississippi. If you are new to the channel, there's so much here. There is the reading um, of the Black Woman Manifesto that happened in the 70s. We spoke about that, which was pushing back on the thought that 
the Monaghan report had forwarded that the melanated woman, because what I found that the melanated woman was responsible for the state of the family. And as we're reading now, which happened before this Monaghan report was written, is that someone is always looking to shift the blame. And this is why we have not been able to come to a resolution. I need a resolution. We haven't been able to come to a resolution in my estimation and research is because people are always willing to shift the blame. When the European decided that it was a good idea to go into the continent and they got permission from the Christian church, the Pope, to go into the continent. And I believe some of that information is on his channel as well. It's, you're gonna get education. You're not gonna get sensationalized. I might be very animated at times, but you're gonna get educated, okay? If you allow yourself to go and do your own research. But when the Pope, I believe it was Nicholas V, if I'm not mistaken, decides to give the okay, the papal bull okay, to go into uncivilized spaces to the heathen to force them into labor spaces this is what opened the floodgates for the start of the slavery in the new world because there was a quest for domination there was a quest for excavating uh, treasures and gold and it's the ego once again okay the ego is driving the desire to elevate above others, not being satisfied with your land, with your space, with what you've been given, okay? And so we have a lot of this ego. I'm diverting off of the story because I already read the story for those who come on the channel and say, just read the story. See, I gave y'all all the story in the beginning and this is the extras, this is the outtakes, okay? The ego allowed people to use new technology, which is these sailing boats, the Portuguese namely, to venture, claiming they was trying to go to India for spices, and they ventured down into the continent to begin to explore the possibility of using these bodies, these melanated bodies, to further their business ventures. Now, it is only fair to say that in the beginning, when they came, so-called Christopher Columbus and the boys, uh, Ponce de Leon and the boys, when they first came to the West, there were bodies already here. And when they initially, and I, and I will come back and read that another time, there's just so much. But when they initially wanted to begin to look for gold and other things in the new world, they tried to use the bodies that were here which were the Arawak Indians and the Tiano Indians and those who were settled throughout the islands. Now, when you go down further, they realize, I found it interesting, and I have to go back because now that's digging into like a lot of stuff. But I found it interesting that they issued ways in which laws in which you can work with the natives who were here. And those laws were so-called to protect them. And it was to um, say that you needed to missionize them and they needed to attend services and you couldn't work them too hard. And all of these laws that when the melanated bodies came from the continent, those laws were like all throughout the, the window. I'll come back and read those laws at another time. And those laws were on the books. But what happened was in a short period of time, a lot of the natives that were here in the Caribbean, namely, they died out. Like in Hispaniola, which is now Haiti and Jamaica, they died out quickly. And so when they realized that they were dying out quickly and that their business ventures were failing, they decided to say, hey, we have been taking some melanated bodies because initially they said you couldn't take the melanated body from the continent straight to the new world because it was also a religious adventure. So you have to take the melanated bodies from the continent and you have to bring them to Spain or Portugal. And then from there, they could take them. So when this particular Pope was like, yo, forget that straight to source, they was like, oh, it's on. And they began asking, this is another thing. When we talk about accepting personal responsibility or being honest with history, they could not, the European could not dock. They could not break the trade as they call it without 
permission. Let no one deceive you. So you had a connection on the other side, which is those chiefs, those leaders on the continent who were engaged in tribal wars, who were engaged in expiring, expanding their, their kingdom, who wanted to dispose of their prisoners of war, who wanted to expose, expose of their thieves and their criminals and decided that I could make some money off of them. I'll give you an example. In today's space and time, the prison industrial complex has a similar thought. When you have criminals or you have thieves or you have people who have been criminalized by society, what do they do? They monetize them. This thought is not new. So this is a this is this seems to be a human characteristic. One more please. Right? They monetize them. And that's exactly what they did at that time. I have some books I've shared before. Sorry, my neck. I have some books that I have shared of the the um, locals, the chiefs being willing to monetize melanated bodies. And that's exactly what they did. And so this permission in the beginning to break trade, this um, giving of trinkets and giving of rum and giving of all of these things, this liquor and all of these things to get these dudes off your hand so that they can't come back and wage war against you and your kingdom actually happened. Right? So when we begin to deal with these truths, then we fall out of this just quote white or black paradigm and look at it for nationalities and human behaviors that contributed to what it is that we're experiencing today. This is what I mean about deactivating the trigger and actually being honest about what we're looking at. So I, I went all over there, I was talking about blackface. So back to the conversation about the blackface, I think this is why this particular article may have triggered some because I did see it shared countless times on Facebook and many, many comments. So why I'm saying it's triggering because I went through and read the comments and the comments were, I can't believe them. Actually, let me go to some of the comments so that I'm not going to Let me see if I can find some of the comments. Can I find some of the comments? I shared it, but I can't remember where I shared it from. Give me 2.5 seconds. See if I can find some of these comments here. Somebody says an apology, here it is. An apology is not enough. How ignorant can you be? We, we're all ignorant. Not only, they're not the only ones who are ignorant. A number of us are ignorant. So that, one moment. If you have any thoughts or comments, feel free to leave it there. So it, at this point, it's at 905 reactions. And the, 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 the title says, an apology is not enough. How ignorant can you be? Okay. I'm just going to be reading you a few of these comments to show these knee jerk reactions to what we're reading here. People are just doing this mess on purpose now. If you still don't know better than, I don't know what teaching my child, I don't want you teaching my child or any child. The school system, the books in the school system are not teaching what the real, you're looking for somebody, again, in this domestic uh, this domestic abuse situation, you're looking at the abuser who's educating your child to accurately inform your child. I'm confused about why we're confused. I'm talking about on both sides of the spectrum. I'm confused about why we're confused. They say the winners write history. So why are you looking for the so-called winner to write an accurate depiction and teach an accurate depiction of your experience? Now I'm confused that you're confused. Um, what's wrong with these people? Another one says this has happened too many times for it to be innocent. 
It should be a hate crime. Only when the true cause is punitive will people stop cloaking their racism under this innocent, well-meant act. Again, the article did paint it as it was innocent and they didn't mean it and we're going to have this discussion. And so, yes, the media does an awesome job at rebranding. Um, these stories. I actually shared one story on here that just doesn't go away, which is how the media painted this melanated body that went, it was a heartwarming reunion between an ex-slave family member and the people that they own. And that story, oh, I forgot to put it in the box. I'll put it there too. So the media does an excellent job of not making it look so bad when the, when the European is making a gesture towards those who they have offended in times past. Um, we're going to have to admit that all these police killings, racist pranks, et cetera, are mostly on purpose. The game is to get away with it. So we're projecting onto the story against a lot of our re unprocessed emotions and feelings on both sides, um, to say why we think these people did this. I could accept it more if she was in the outfit without the black face 2019. So people are still asking, are we 2019? And, and that's another thing. She was in the outfit. And this particular story, I don't think it hide, I think it did. But she also did put on a daishiki dress and a aqua blue head wrap to match the daishiki dress. But the reality is, I'll tell you the truth, just like in the case of Rachel Dolezal, if she didn't put the black face on, and this is not making an excuse for her, but if she didn't put the black face on, hey, welcome to the discussion. And she had on the daishiki and the headdress, it would have been said it was cultural appropriation. We need to have the discussion. The question is, did they have someone who was fit for the job that was able to do that story? Then if there was somebody who was fit for the job, you would have heard that she only picked them because they were black. I mean, somebody is mad that it's a story about David Livingston. Again, I went over the details of the story. Let me know what you think. Somebody said, didn't she learn from Rachel Dolezal? <laughs> and another person, I'll leave on this. It only happens because we allow it to. She should be fired immediately and prayers for the speedy recovery of Mr. Madison. I don't know who Mr. Madison is, but. And somebody says, I said that was the last one, right? Um, don't do that. I respect her intent, no, no matter how dumb it is somebody says. So again, there's like 900 some comments of which I'm not going to read. But again, if we took the time to not necessarily be triggered by the picture and like break each and everything down into these little portions of what we're actually looking at so that we can get out why you mad. I don't know if you guys are remember um, the mad rapper. I forgot. I forgot. Um, it's a joke I do from, from the 90s, but I forgot what was the rapper's name, but there was a sketch on somebody's album. If, there, if you remember, tell me in the box. Um, there was a sketch on somebody's album that uh, they called themselves the mad rapper. And it was like, yo, tell me why you mad, son. Tell me why you mad. We have to be able to break these stories down into smaller pieces and parse out or unpack the different pieces so that we can begin to really understand why we're mad. If you don't understand why you're mad, someone else will always be in control of you. With that said, I'll be back a little later to read more of Coming of Age in Mississippi. And I will be back, I don't know if it's today, to talk more about the R. Kelly situation as people are now up in arms about him announcing a world tour to go to Australia. But that's not what I wanna talk about. I wanna talk about, again, unpacking and not being triggered um, here and there, I want to talk about unpacking more of the connection of what was going on, according to some testimonies of the family history, what was going on that could have um, created the environment for such an individual to be elevated and then released on the world. Why am I talking about it? Because it now has become our problem, the world's problem, or the country's problem, because we, the culture is the one who propped him up and gave him the stage to be able to affect so many people. So with that said, everybody have a blessed morning. We'll be back a little later. You know, I went a bit long, but it's all right. I gave you a lot of research to do. <laughs> all right. One.